One of my favorite things about Trailmakers is that the building process is very simple. Cars can be made in an almost Lego-like way, which just makes it easy to approach. There's a new game though that I've been asked to play a lot more than I expected called Screwdrivers that takes this idea and really runs with it. Now you can see here the car that the game basically starts you off with, and I have a bunch of electric motors attached to a pretty big gear ratio to get me up to a higher speed. Now this car was almost done, the only things I needed to do to it were to reinforce the motors in the middle and also add on some front wheels. After just a few minutes here, I was able to get loaded in and you can see me trying it out now. And this was definitely working pretty well, although I still wasn't quite that good at driving yet. So I spent a little bit more time perfecting my car and getting it to the point where I could beat a lot more of the levels. Now this was all fun, but usually I don't like to just play the campaign levels for my videos and I wanted to try making something that I didn't know if it was going to work. Considering I only have car pieces in this game, I wanted to see if it was possible to make a working helicopter. Now I had some ideas of how to approach this here, and you can see me loading back into the editor now. I completely cleared out my design, and I wanted to start out by making a simple base. Now once I had that in place, the next thing I wanted to do here was add on some tall pieces and attach a motor to them. Now you can see this motor that I put down is the most powerful one in the game, and after attaching an axle to the output, Output, I also added on a piece that lets me attach wood pieces to the output of that axle. This piece is pretty much the only thing that I thought would make this possible, because what I'd be able to do is add on some spoiler pieces to the ends of this bar, and by spinning them up, I was hoping to generate some lift. Now I've tried this in a few other games as well, and it doesn't always work as expected, but testing this out here, I was getting some movement but I think it was just because I was spinning around chaotically and slamming into the ground. So to control this test a little bit better here, I added on some long skis, and I was hoping these would keep me on the ground a little bit more. Trying this out though, I noticed something really strange. It doesn't seem like I'm doing anything right now, but I'm trying to make the motor spin, and it only sometimes was working. This was a little bit bizarre, but at the time, I didn't think too much of it, and to get even more speed on these propeller blades, I wanted to try adding on a gearbox to increase that output shaft speed. This looked pretty good at first, and I could stack even more of these here, and you can see that speed just keeps multiplying. This was looking perfect, and after deciding on adding four of these just to get it going as fast as possible, I added on another adapter here and another wooden beam. And you can see after adding on some dowels here, I added back on the spoiler pieces, and once they were in place, I wanted to give it a shot. Before that though, this isn't a sponsor spot, but there is something I want to talk very quickly about. I'm developing developing a product I'm calling MixiSynth, which is an intuitive portable synthesizer for anyone. Hopefully in the next week or so, I'll be posting some content on my second channel about it, so make sure to stay posted for that. But if you want to learn more about it, or get notified right when it opens up, make sure to use the link below to follow the project. But trying to test this out now, I noticed that nothing was happening. This time though, I couldn't even get it to sometimes spin up, so that was worrying me a little bit. Now I had an idea for why this would be happening, but before I I tackled that, I just wanted to flip around these spoiler pieces, because I noticed if I put them in this orientation, I'll get even more lift. After that though, to fix the spinning up issue, you'll notice I put down some suspension, and I'm putting down some tires. And I thought the problem might be that if I don't have any wheels on the ground, it doesn't want to spin up or something like that, but even trying this out, I still wasn't getting anywhere. This was just really bizarre here, and the next thing I wanted to do was add on another motor and see if driving this around would make the motor spin up. And here, while I was able to move back and forth a little bit, I still wasn't really getting anywhere, and I realized maybe the problem is that I need the motor attached to the propeller to also be attached to wheels. This kind of makes sense to me, because if you're trying to maximize the amount of power, you wouldn't want to be powering things that aren't directly attached to the ground. So you can see here, I revised the design a lot, and I'm using a long chain of engines in the bottom here, and what I'm going to do is power both wheels and the propeller off the same motors. This is my way of kind of tricking the game into powering propellers even though they weren't directly attached to the ground. Now you can see to make this here, originally I was going to use some of these 90 degree adapters, and once I got a setup here that would allow both wheels to move in the same direction, I attached on some axles here, and this should allow me to start moving on the ground. Now because of all those motors, it was actually pretty powerful too, and I was able to take it on some of these big mountains. This was fun, but now I need to get the power to go straight 
straight up in the air. And in order to do that, I was going to need a lot more 90 degree adapters. So I tried revising the setup a little bit here. And you can see me using an entirely different gearing system now to get my 90 degree adapter where it needs to be. Finally, though, I was once again able to get an axle pointing straight up in the air. And once I had that, I just needed to reinforce it. And then all I needed to do was add on my propeller. Trying this out, though, without any spoilers on it, just the mass of this thing spinning around was enough to completely spin out my car. This wasn't great, but I was hoping that once I had the spoilers on this, it would still be able to get off the ground, at least as a proof of concept. Giving this a shot, though, I didn't really see it working, but I thought that I might have seen the suspension slightly lifting off the ground. So to get a little bit more lift, I tried adding on some more spoilers here, and almost immediately, I took off. This was what I was hoping to see, although it was completely uncontrollable. This, though, still was an important first step here, and I wanted to see if I could refine the design a little bit more and get this working better. Now, one of the ideas that I had was to add on another engine in the back and add on a tail rotor to counteract that spin. This, of course, is how normal helicopters tackle this problem, and once I got some spoilers on here, I wanted to give it a shot, but it seems like there's just so much mass spinning around on top, there's really no way I'm going to be able to counteract it. So, I liked the design, but instead of just using one propeller blade, I was going to want to use two. And the reason for that is I can have the spin of one propeller blade counteract the spin of the other, and this should make it all work. Now, I figured, though, if I was using two propeller blades, I might as well make a VTOL with this. And you can see starting out here, I added on some 90 degree adapters, and I wanted to start building up the propeller blades. Now, there was quite a bit of trial and error here, but eventually I settled on this design, and trying it out, it sort of was working, but I noticed there was a big problem. Originally, my plan was to have these propeller blades slightly intersect each other, and that would allow me to save a lot of space. The problem, though, is that the blades don't spin at exactly the same rate, and sometimes they would hit into each other. So in order to solve that, I was going to need to move the blades further apart, and after a pretty big redesign here, while the blades were spinning, I noticed they were spinning in the same direction, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of having two blades counteract each other. So I went ahead, I changed the direction of two of the engines, and every time that I spawn in, I slowly fall down to the ground, and this was close to working. Now, of course, though, the solution is I'm either going to need longer blades or more speed on them, and in order to get that here, I wanted to add on some planetary gearboxes and see if this would help. Trying this out, though, it wasn't spinning up anymore, which I thought was a little strange. Now, I assumed, though, this is probably the same problem we saw before, and in order to fix that, I added on some wheels directly to the output of the engines here, and you can see trying this out, while the wheels were spinning, I still wasn't getting any spinning out of the gearbox. There's something strange about the gearbox in this game, and I decided instead to use a more traditional gear ratio, and this also let me move the propeller blades further apart. At first, though, they were spinning in the same direction again, which caused me to spin out a lot, but you can see now, I spun it up here, and it totally worked. It also nosedived into the ground, which I was a little confused about, and it seemed like no matter what I did, I was always flipping around in flight. That's when I realized, though, that this game is automatic in-air controls, and by binding double to my engines, I'm actually also telling it to pitch forward as well. Solving this was actually super easy, I just had to change my engine controls to different keys, and once I did this, I wanted to give it a shot. Now you can see this time it's working a lot better, and because of those automatic controls, I'm also able to go anywhere that I want. Originally, I was expecting to have to make an automatic steering system, but because it's already baked in, this actually makes it pretty easy for me, and I can already move on to the next part, which is gonna be the hardest. With the helicopter portion working, now I need to make the mechanism that'll fold down the blades and let me convert into a plane mode. Now, in order to do this, you can see that I'm adding on one of these 90 degree gears, and after adding another on as well, I wanted to add a final one on top of this whole stack. Now, the idea with this, of course, is that I still am going to get that vertical shaft that I need in helicopter mode, but using a servo motor, which I'm putting down now, I'll also be able to rotate this entire thing 90 degrees and still have the gears mesh with each other and give me the speed that I need. Now, I also 
decided to mirror this onto the other side just to test it out, and see once I got the spoilers back in place here, I wanted to give it a shot. Trying this out though, you'll notice that as soon as the engines start to move, the entire mechanism moves 90 degrees forward and then gets stuck there. Now to fix that, I added a bar between both sides, and once I did this, it kind of cancels out the rotation of both sides, and this did seem to work. You'll notice now I was once again able to fly around here, and this was looking better. Now one last thing I wanted to do though was add on some more blades, and in order to do that, I needed to move these propellers further apart. This will let me get even more thrust, which should make it a little bit more controllable. One other thing I wanted to do though was reduce the total weight of the helicopter, and to do that, you'll notice I'm trying to use a single motor now to power both of the propellers, but I noticed that both the propellers seem to be moving in the same direction. Now this was really weird, because it had my gearing set up specifically to not have this happen, but I went ahead and on the bottom I flipped the direction of one of the propellers to hopefully solve this. Again though, this still made them spin in the same direction, which was just really strange. Now I had a feeling the game was doing something weird here, and you'll notice that I added on gears to both sides of this propeller, and by doing this it should of course bind up the mechanism since I can't have that top gear spinning both counterclockwise and clockwise. When I tried this out though, you'll notice that the propeller spun up with no problem at all, and I think for some reason this game isn't respecting the direction gears move, and I realized that the only way to solve this problem was gonna be to have two separate motors. This wasn't that big of a deal to begin with, but I just thought it was really strange that the gears didn't really work how they were supposed to. Once again though, you can see this comes off the ground pretty much no problem here, and I'm able to start moving around the map. I reduced as much weight as I could, and you can see now I'm engaging those servos and moving the blades forward. This did seem to work fine, so seeing this, I wanted to try painting this entire thing up yellow, and starting on some of the aesthetics. So of course, started working on the back here, made a couple of long arms, and for the front as well, I made a sort of cockpit-like area. Now I didn't really see any body panels, so I was trying my best to just outline things nicely with these blocks, and I think overall looked alright. Now I also added on some more spoilers here, and I used these small spoilers to give a nice little accent. And with that all in place, the last thing I needed to do was link the engines back up to the rest of the design, and you can see trying it out now, the blades fold forward fine, and moving into the air, with those extra spoilers, I have a lot more thrust. Trying to move this into plane mode though, it still seemed to have a lot of trouble moving this while the engines were running, so to fix that, I added on some stops here that make sure the blades can't move too far down. Now also configuring their angles a little bit better here, I was able to get the propellers to angle forward a lot more, and with this, I finally had something that was moving pretty fast through the air. This was what I was looking for, and and finally now, to give this thing the ability to make some soft landings, I added on some suspension and some small wheels. This added on a little bit of weight, but it was still able to move through the air fine here, and you can see me cruising around the map now. Now overall, I still think it's a little strange the way the gears work in this game, but it was pretty fun to work with, and compared to Besiege, I do like that the gears are completely rigid, and they don't start randomly skipping under a lot of load. Now another thing is these mid-air controls do work, but you can see that sometimes it kind of just randomly moves to the side a lot, and that's because they're anything but perfect. But guys, if you want to see more of this game, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you want to support my project on Kickstarter, make sure to check out that link down below as well. Otherwise, till next time.